team always talks about, you know, trying to find a way and everything and considering not a whole lot there in the first 40 minutes. How much was it really that in the third tonight for these guys? I thought we had a good second. We had some good quality stuff uh, at their net uh, that were better than we were in the first period and generated some flow in our game. And third period, we got the lead, and then we kind of, you know, they came at us, and uh, they're a dangerous team. I think uh, if we're not aware by now, that's a good hockey team, and that's that's where we're at. Joel, uh, in that first period, what, what wasn't clicking maybe, and, and was it difficult for the guys to stay patient? or? Yeah, I think that, you know, there's half the period with special teams. And uh, so that was part of it. And, uh, and then we picked up uh, some momentum in the second and got going and started skating. But I, I don't think we were quick enough to, to begin the game and spent too much time and basically not generating or in our end. Joel, uh, you talk about Brent Saad's playoff, his finals. It seems like every game he finds a way to, to bring it up another level. No, he's been great. Um, I loved his game tonight. Uh, great power move to the net. Um, gives us speed, you know, use him in all situations. He's fast, he's big, he's strong, he's dangerous. You know, very good, very good performance. Joel, um, the gamesmanship with the lines, uh, the players said they knew ahead of time and, and running the different ones in warm-ups. Is, is, when a series is this close, are you just looking for any edge you possibly can get and the element of surprise? Yeah, well, there's an element of surprise. I mean, we expected their goalie in the net, the other goalie in the net tonight, too. So I guess, I guess it's 50-50 tonight. <laughs> Julie, you have a core group of, of Taves and, and Kane and Hoso who have been here for, for two championships and a third run here, and, and Shaw and Saad sort of came in after, and it's, it's Tevu this year. Um, how, how do you bring guys into the fold the way that, that the team has done into this, this core group and make sure everybody is effective and sort of the train keeps moving? Well, every, every guy's got a different file to him. You know, Sauter and Shazi spent some time in you know, lockout season uh, playing in the American League. Tabo did that this year as well. I think that's good uh, foundation for these young players. Uh, nothing's given to them. they got to earn it. And uh, I think when they come into their team, they've got to earn it as well. And, um, but they're, they're certainly high-end players that uh, really contribute in their ways. And, uh, you know, they, they get to watch some top players and learn the right way how to prepare, how to compete, how to play. And, uh, you know, eventually, you know, they grab a little bit more responsibility in all their cases. And it's a you know, organization. There's some upside uh, for these younger guys. And I think that's good for the future of the team as well. Joel, do you ever think that uh, Duncan Keith might be able to play like an entire 60-minute game? The reason I ask is because it just doesn't seem like there's ever too much for him. Yeah, you know, it's like uh, we get asked that a lot in the last two rounds, uh, you know, how he, how he handles it. And it's almost like the more he plays, the, more he, the better he gets and the more he enjoys it. Um, so that's uh, you know, it's a great spot to be in as a team, knowing that this play picks up the more he gets. And, and the bigger the games you're getting, uh, the more he's getting, too. So he's, uh, he prepares well. You know, he took the morning off this morning, and, and uh, he was ready to go all night. And, He's a great, uh, he's a great player and fun to coach. Um, Joel, could you explain what what you were hoping to achieve or what the motivation was behind the actual shuffle up front and what you were uh, what you were hoping to improve? We're looking for balance that? in our lineup. Uh, you know, I don't think we had enough uh, offense from uh, our group, and uh, I just thought the last game Johnny's line was there, uh, and Johnny's line's been generating most of our offense, and we're trying to get uh, some secondary scoring or secondary balance and uh, get a more complete team game. I thought we had some better stretches, even though that uh, we didn't have any production uh, for the first part of the game. The five-on-five five game wasn't really giving up anything, and that's usually how we measure our performance. Uh, Joel, Corey talked about being displeased with his, his performance the last two games. Did you feel like coming in today that he needed to play better to give you guys a chance to win? Well, we know the importance of goaltending and, uh, you know, game in, game out. Uh, I thought he was outstanding tonight. Uh, you know, call it a goalie win. And I uh, loved how he battled. He's a battler. And uh, it's a great illustration how he stayed with it, uh, how they swarmed us at the end. And uh, he was moving and he was following the puck. And he was big. He was big. Nice response. So how, how impressed are you by his resiliency that he's shown, you know, through these playoffs and, and even over the years, you know, with all the criticism that he gets? Yeah, I, I you know, I think that probably a little bit more than than a lot of top players that, uh, you know, goaltenders obviously get a lot more scrutiny and uh, they measure a lot of times the ones that go in, not the ones you save. And um, But he always finds a way to push through and, and uh, look to stop the next puck and, you know, we saw in 2013 what he's capable of doing, and uh, you know, this season, regular season-wise, uh, you know, he was outstanding. So we're uh, 
we're happy to have him, and uh, we know the way he prepares and, and likes to battle. Joel, uh, what did you think of Team Inan's game, and do you think he did he earn the right to play again in the series? I liked him. You know, he's you know he's safe, he's simple, he's smart, he's hard in the puck area, and uh, you know he's he knows how to play in his own end, and I like that predictability in his game. And you know, like the crossbar at the end and the third, that'd have been a nice treat. But certainly, uh, we didn't we didn't mind his game. Coach, what is it about your high-end players that allows them to come through in these types of situations when you're down in a series almost all the time? Is it is it a mental makeup? Is it just skill? Well, how do they keep doing it? Well, we've got a lot of guys that are uh, top-end guys, and uh, you know we don't just really look for one or one or two guys. I think they get some help along the way, and uh, you know when you make lines, there's a lot more options out there, and and sometimes we look for balance, sometimes you look for matchups, and um, at the end of the day, I think that. Uh, Getting the other team more concerned with different guys uh, makes us a deeper team, and and that's why we say a lot. I don't care who scores goals, and and uh, and some nights it's uh, the least expected guys, but uh, generally the the charge is led by our top guys.